Okay. <laughs> so, hi, I'm Patricia Grubel from Los Alamos National Laboratory, and I'm going to introduce software testing to you, and then David will take um, over and do a walkthrough. Uh, okay, so I swapped, but Matt, now I'm not, there we go, wasn't proceeding through. And um, he will then go on to advanced testing. And in this section, we're going to um, develop a context for your testing and go through some challenges. And then uh, we'll look at uh, some examples and a little bit about the uh, hands-on example um, in the context of testing. So domain experts um, are needed for, well, first of all, this is a complex process when you do testing. Um, the software development, my screen just changed. Did that uh, change for anyone else? Yes. No, okay. There. You still have the slides? It should be showing testing within the software development lifecycle. This is what I see. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's just that the slides disappeared on me for a second. <laughs> anyway, it's a complex project uh, process, the whole software development process, and it requires, especially in the scientific area, uh, many experts from different domains. Uh, we have domain experts that have a set of models in mind. They propose equations and models. They should also val uh, do the validation checks, which uh, come from physical world and the mathematical properties of their models. And they need to look at things like uh, the conserved quantities and analytical solutions. Then we have applied mathematicians who work with solvers and discretations. They should contribute a good understanding of function spaces, convergence criteria, uh, convergence criteria. And then they need to address fidelity, accuracy, and stability of the model. And then you have the computer scientists and those in that area, uh, software engineers and optimization experts that uh, you may need a, a team of them. And between all of them, they will iterate on this project uh, through testing and develop while they're developing. So testing is a very important area. Um, and during different phases of the uh, project, there is, are different things that are, are really important. Um, during the initial development, functionality is tested as it's added. And these activities are really tests and they should be recognized as such and developed and then maintained and captured for future use. Especially important are synthetic use cases that check the accuracy of the models and the stability of the models themselves. Um, they need to be able to match the algorithms to the models and check the interoperability between them. Although it's extra work up front, it's worthwhile to design data structures that allow these algorithms to interoperate and to save that information in the form of tests. In later stages, those tests become even more important. They help check the behavior of existing codes when adding new capabilities, um, modifying existing capabilities, adapting to new architectures, um, and uh, these serve as a baseline for checks for ongoing maintenance and for preparation for production um, so that they can uh, make sure that the uh, when they put a code into production, the users will not have problems with it. Um, <clears throat> There's an, ex uh, for example, if hardware vendors are usually uh, willing to accelerate your algorithms, but they need to be provided uh, with good tests. So when architectures change, you need to think about these uh, types of, um, uh, that, that you have these ongoing tests and you can verify uh, these, all these different types of things. So here is a summary of practices that was detected by scanning GitHub repositories that were associated with uh, groups of scientific so uh, software development projects. And you can see that from left to right is um, a greater quantity. This is 100%. And you see that uh, the projects have about half of them have test files and directories, and that's as many as have README, and almost as many as have build um, 
processes. So this shows that, that testing is very important to the community and they recognize this. There are, uh, this presentation is, can be useful for all, um, uh, for each group, uh, someone who's new to testing, someone who's working with a late legacy project, and those who have testing practices but are looking for improving them. Um, they'll have, we have useful advice for each of those groups. Those that are new to software testing can find advice for getting started in their first project. And those that are working with legacy projects, we can show you how, that, how you could isolate code and then incremental, incrementally add tests. Those with existing testing practices, you may find that the definitions in this introduction and the advanced portion of the tutorial are useful for improving your verification strategies. And you will see how in uh, the advanced section, how uh, these examples are used for um, others. I have lost my screen again. This is crazy. <laughs> must have some type of timer um you can see it though <laughs> okay so um first let's go through some um definitions there are many kinds of software tests and uh, there are entire volumes that have been written on this subject and so we'd like to, we'll cover some of that a little bit of definitions that'll help you the purpose of the tests are to build confidence that your software is doing what it's supposed to do. There's um, tests are part of a verification process that checks each step of the process and it's building the mathematical object it's supposed to. Uh, the verification process needs to look at each of these steps and show that the steps work as expected. Tests are the implementation part of that process. Validation is harder. It's a harder problem. It's outward looking and it, it asks whether your science domain is covered by the models and algorithms that you've implemented. So it's good to keep in mind that a correctly implemented code can prove or disprove a scientific model. Tests at both the component level and at the system level are needed. There's not a real strict divide between these levels, but they are often termed unit and integration tests. Um, the validation of each component is very important. Uh, you need to build uh, diagnostics and ensure that there are such things as the conservation of physical qualities are met. Uh, also, in testing practices, it's very important to look at things while you're uh, looking at your perform your um, code, whether it's um, and differentiate between drift and round off. Also, we talk about making sure that your tests um, cover your code and the interoperability parts of your code. There are ch many challenges during testing. Um, the challenges are different whether you're using, uh, if you're doing exploratory software or have legacy codes or when you're going into production with release codes. Uh, research software has a unique challenge as compared to industri industrial software. And uh, even if you ask research divisions in uh, big tech companies and in industry, what your, their requirements are for testing, um, they won't always be able to give you a concrete answer. And that's because research software explores areas where we don't actually always know what the um, results are. And that after all, and once you get an expected behavior, then they can be checked to rely uh, that by the domain experts to make sure that the models have been validated. And then they can, inter can inter iterate on the design with the um, rest of the team. Then legacy codes have even more, uh, a more def um, definite expected behaviors but the tests have been lost a lot of times in the midst of times. The developers are no longer around. Um, even the scientists that uh, were verifying the models may not be around. So adding tests can be a very difficult problem. So 
it's necessary to look at the assumptions about the inputs and their effects on which parts of the codes code are exercised. Uh, and it can be difficult to tell how parts of that the code interact and what everything's supposed to be doing. So um, what they can do is build up tests by isolating code. And we'll talk about this a little bit more, uh, especially in the advanced uh, section. And then when you are in the process of releasing codes, the challenges are even different. They usually want a thorough code review so that you verify that everything has been addressed and its intended use. And verification is a very cost-effective way that ensures that the code defects don't get through to the users. Last, I'll go through, um, well, we'll go through some examples that um, will help you to get tests into your daily workflow. It's not really hard. It's, it's not hard. Uh, it's but it might be hard to get started. And we'll show you a little bit of uh, some ideas where you can get started very easily. If you've written a function that checks for errors, you could turn that into a text, test. <laughs> so um, here's an example of using PyScaffold. It, uh, it's a framework, and it generates the setup.py and other files which are associated with Python's build and test process. You can use those generated files to jumpstart your own. You can uh, add your own type uh, checking routines. And as it's generated, it creates one uh, test file to begin with that uses the PyTest framework. Uh, this asserts several properties. And of course, they use the Fibonacci uh, example, but then you can substitute yours. And one of the things that this is nice, it shows it, that goes ahead and it tests the coverage, which is shows how much of the uh, routine has actually been tested with the test or what how it's covered. Um, it even provides a neat summary of code coverage, and then it has um, um, you can template your project and then import your own files to this. It also has some nice presets for documenting with Sphinx and releasing your package to the PyPy package repository. I think I went too far. No, yes. <laughs> so then for the uh, compiled codes that are based on are that written in C and C++ and also Fortran, CMake build systems are currently popular. It, already provides an easy way to build tests in its C test framework. You use, just really use um, add test inside CMake. Uh, after writing a few of these tests, you will probably want to use a library like Google Test or Catch2 to make your tests more readable. Um, I mentioned one of the projects yesterday using uh, basing their tests off of Google Test. Um, Actually, the only reason it wasn't just Google tests is they had to modify them because of the uh, under some of the underlying processes, but they based it off of that. So that's a, a, another way to get going as you expand. Uh, the BLT project provides a set of CMake files designed for building with Google tests for C or Fruit for Fortran, uh, doing code coverage and continuous integration. And we'll cover a little bit more about continuous integration further in the, the talk this morning, the talks this morning. One of its best features is that it's well documented. So the instructions tell you exactly how to add it to your project. It also has shortcuts for creating nice documentation with Doxygen plus Sphinx. And if you, as you can see here, you can build an empty project. Uh, it's fairly easy and that'll get you going for your framework. Once you've tried these te tests, you can explore more options. I mentioned CTest and PyTest for compiled and Python codes. Uh, test coverage for compiled codes can be checked with GGov or LCOV. <clears throat> and then LCOV will output to a browser, HMTL. And then you can pull it up in your browser and have a nice GUI. Uh, the static source code analysis is provided by your compiler warnings, but also by Clang uh, Tidy project for C++. In Python, you can use PyTestCov. And for coverage and 
Uh, and then for your static source code analysis, you can use PyLint and Flake. There are also online services that will run those tools on your project and help with visualization results. Uh, code coverage analysis is a useful thing because it lets you quickly find parts of your code that you have not yet written. Um, G, we, I mentioned both uh, GGov and uh, LGov, but also there are other, those are for C and Fortran, and there are other tools that exist for other languages, and um, we have them written here so that you can look them up. We have the uh, references for LGov, Cov, <laughs> and um, there are hosted services, servers um, that you can use for your continuous integration. Then why do we want to look at these? This is an example of uh, the output from GGov. And you can see that it shows you how many times the uh, your source code line has been exercised. And it get, shows you the lines that haven't been exercised with these um, dash uh, um, symbols they end, and then uh, these dashes are just for lines that have not that are not executable so you can look at this and and uh, create more tests to make sure you cover um, most of your or the most important parts of your code get yourself um, good coverage and last of all, and here I'll show you a graphical view um, of GGov. You can show it shows you how much coverage you have. You can dig down into line by line detail, and there are some good tutorials online, and we give you those references. So, in summary, a productive software team is always checking their work. Um, take time to recognize these checks. Make them. Uh, make them um, repeatable and real tests, and that will start your framework for testing. Uh, test layouts should mirror the logical structure of your code. You want to test each module, being aware of modules, the module to module uh, dependencies. Uh, you, then you can build some interface tests. Um, Different challenges are associated with different types of code, with your exploratory code, uh, both your legacy code and your release codes. Adapt your strategy to fit your situation. Uh, eventually, you'll want to verify all the components in a code release and have these harden these tests so that you can be doing this continuously as the code changes and you have new releases. Don't get distracted by everything that's out there. Focus on ex exercising your code, and you can uh, scaffolding projects can help you with the mechanics. Um, you can, and then we'll show you some techniques in the next sections that you can use. And there's plenty of time for questions, I see. Um, so if there are any, I will stop sharing my screen.